Well, good evening, everyone. Let's all stand to our feet here tonight. If you're in the sanctuary and if Amen. you're watching live, we're glad to have you watching Amen. out there. Praise God. Uh, let's pray. We're going to open up in prayer. Dear Father, Yahweh Elohim, we thank you for another opportunity to study your word in this Bible study here yes. tonight. And we're going to be studying more about the depth of Satan. And Father God, we're... Father, I thank you for all those that uh, are watching live, and I ask that we just have a smooth broadcast here tonight, that the sound is good, that all, everything else is good, and uh, that uh, no weapon formed against anyone here or watching live uh, should prosper. And Father, I thank you for that now in Jesus' name. And Father, I also ask that you bless every gift and every giver and all those that financially Amen. support this ministry. Amen. And Father God, I also speak for everyone that peers into this ministry, that they get their daily bread. And Father God, I ask that our state gets uh, her daily bread, that all the states of our country get their daily bread, no matter what uh, is going on in those states, that our country and our president gets his daily bread. And Father God, that you give us our daily bread for all those that are watching. In Jesus' name, and all Amen. God's people said, Amen. 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 Uh, you're welcome to take your seats here tonight. Ushers, come on forward. If you uh, are watching, uh, we're glad to have you watching. Uh, let us know that you're watching. If you're watching on Facebook, you can make comments or just sign in and say, hey, I'm watching. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, then go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And you can also make comments there as well. And uh, become a regular financial partner with this ministry. It's easy to give. Uh, just use our our mobile app on your telephone. If you don't have the mobile app yet on your cell phone, then go to our website, mountainfaith.org, and download our mobile app. It's free of charge and you, all yeah. kinds of exciting things. Daily devos, uh, ways to contact me directly. And also you can watch us live off of there and then watch us all of our produced YouTube videos on there, particularly the most recent ones. I want to start out with this. We had a, we had a, a viewer, uh, a viewer and a partner from uh, Minnesota send us a letter that was on someone's website. It's a rather large ministry and the ministry I generally approve of. I mean, they do good work and, and the message is right on. But this one particular one was way off. First of all, uh, he said that God did not create Satan, that man did, that humans did. And I went and I wanted to uncover that. Then the second thing that was wrong with this discussion that was here is he was calling Satan Lucifer. And the thing that we uh, discovered again last week that Lucifer is from the Latin. It's not in the Hebrew. Lucifer in Latin means light bearer. And even the Pope is called Jesus light bearer using the term Lucifer. So Lucifer is a verb rather than a noun. And it, it, people really shouldn't be using it. it. It's become commonplace to use it because as Latin was being translated into English, the King James Version picked all that up. The next thing that we, uh, that we saw is that uh, he said that Lucifer was there to in the Garden of Eden to help out Adam and Eve. And we proved, and I'm going to reprove again last, uh, this week, but we proved last week that uh, Satan fell already by the time uh, the Garden of Eden was made. Uh, the next thing that we found, so we're going to just look at a lot of these things. There were just so many things wrong with this teaching. The first thing that we want to look at here tonight is what is the name of Lucifer? What is the name of Satan? What is the name of the serpent? And the first name that we bump into in the Bible is the word snake, the serpent. And so that word there, serpent, is, uh, I'm, I'm just going to read it from the Hebrew, and I have a lot of Hebrew here. By the way, if you're wondering why Hebrew is so important to learn, and at least to understand if you can't learn it, or if you don't want to learn it, don't have to take the time to learn it, uh, Hebrew builds on itself. There's a root word, okay. and then there's another word that builds off that root word. So, for example, uh, Shamaim means the heavens. Uh, Maim means water. So we get different things, and we're talking about atmosphere and water and lakes and, and streams, and then we're talking about uh, steam and water vapor. All those words are related. If I talk to you about the ear in Hebrew, out of the ear comes, in our, in our natural, natural senses, comes our sense of balance. 
Well, the word for balance and for ear are related to one another. In other words, there's oh. root words inside each one. Okay. The Hebrew is full of root words. And so you have a root word, generally two or three consonants long, and then you'll have other words that are very similar in nature. So the word for snake is nekash, all right? And it, it comes, it means, the understanding is it means to hiss, but that's not its root word. The root word for snake comes from, this is Old Testament in Strong's Concordance. People, you can go back and play this later on, look this up if you want to. Uh, Strong's 5175 is nekash. But Strong's 5172 is also nakash, and it's the prime root or the primitive root, and it means this, to whisper a magic spell to prognosticate. <laughs> and I had to look that up to make sure I under, actually uh, understood what it meant. And we're going to come back to that. So once we have the first introduction of Satan is as a serpent, and it right. means a snake to hiss. So by that time, he was an already fallen being. He was not there to help Adam and Eve. That's right. The next time that we, we see him, we have to go look at this. Let's go over to Isaiah chapter 14, Isaiah 14. And we're going to review because I went through a lot of this information really fast last week. And we'll do a shortened version of it. Isaiah uh, 14, and Kathy, read verse, just verse 12 for me, please. How you have fallen from heaven, O star of the morning, son of the dawn. You have been cut down to the earth, you who have weakened the nations. Now, it's interesting that what's being said there is not star of the morning at all. The word star is not there. The word morning, which is a rev in Hebrew, is not there. Uh, and if you're reading from a King James, it's going to say Lucifer. It's the only time that Lucifer appears in most Bibles. And Lucifer is not there in the original Hebrew. Like I just said, Lucifer came from, the word came from an action verb in the Latin, which means light bearer or light carrier. And it could be used just about for anything. So, But it's been tradition that we've used that term to describe him, but that's not the term. And star of the morning is not there. And so when we go up and look at what the word is that is there, the word that is there in the Hebrew is halal. Now halal is a word that has a root word, and the root word of halal is halal. That root word is all over the Old Testament. And that root word, halal, means to praise. So when we go to Psalm 150, for example, and we look at the Hebrew in Psalm 150, and it opens up with this root word, mm -hmm. halal. It says, halal, ya, hallelujah, in the Hebrew. And it, so it says to praise Yah, and Yah is God's personal name. Right. It's his, his formal name is Yahweh. His personal poetic name is Yah, Y-A-H. And so hallelujah. And of course the Yah is a Yud and a He. Just, it's just that simple. A Yud and a He describes God. And, and that same meaning, Yah, also means to exist and to be. So God exists. God says, I am that I am. So when we praise him and say hallelujah, and even if you don't know what it means, you're, in, you're speaking Hebrew. And right. people, people are it's making true. fun of someone to go hallelujah, my groceries finally showed up, or right. hallelujah, the gas man is here, or you mm -hmm. know, hallelujah, you know, the, the supper turned out right this mm -hmm. time. Well, right. you're using terminology that actually praises God. This is the interesting thing. The word in the Hebrew, where it says star of the morning, like in my Bible here, it says star of the morning, but that's not actually there. It doesn't say star of the morning, son of the dawn. It says halal. And halal is, means praise. Okay. So isn't it interesting that Satan's original name is also his work? It's what he's supposed to do. And let me, let me for those who have never heard me teach on the po uh, poetic nature of Hebrew, when Noah was named, God named, uh, excuse me, his father, 
uh, Lamech named him Noak, for there shall be Noak in his days, or rest in his days. So in that same sentence in the Hebrew, when Noah is born and, and, and he's being named, it says Noak twice. And I showed it, I think, either last Sunday or the previous Sunday on the overhead as I was teaching about the flood story. When it comes to Solomon, there was a, uh, there was a prophetic thing uh, concerning Solomon. I shall, I shall name him Shlomo, for he shall have shalom in his days. Both of those words are not just related. Right. That's They're beast. spelt nearly identical. And so uh, shalom is more of a root word for shlomo. And, and so I'm going to name him peace, for he shall have peace in his days. I'm going to name him rest, for he shall have rest in his days. Uh, and Peleg, for example, and, and Peleg was named by his mother. And he said, for in that day, the earth was divided. So I'm going to name him divided, for in that day, or in the days of his of his life, the earth became divided or separated out from the Pangaea, uh, the one uh, landmass that the earth was originally made of. And by the way, that's all scientific. So when we're studying about Satan, what we're finding out is halal or halal mm -hmm. is all the root word, it comes down to the root word of halal, which means to pray. So his job was to praise and his name was praise. Right. All right, so let's now, let's go over. Uh, so he's, he's not a star. Let's go over to uh, Ezekiel. Kathy, start out in verse 13. Ezekiel 28. Oh, well, well, let's go back to verse 5 first. Let's let, look at verse 5. By your great wisdom, by your trade, you have increased your riches and your heart is lifted up because of your riches. Now, we spent a lot of time on this last week, so that's why you have to go back and look at it. But that word trade there uh, is really a commodity, and you have it written in your Bible. What do you have written in your Bible there? Is it written on that one? No, it's... Written on a further one? Uh, by your communication. It, slander. By your slander, by your communication. Yeah. What do we know about the word Satan in Hebrew? Satan in Hebrew me means accuser. Right. Slanderer. We're yes. going to find out more about how important this really is tonight. And for you to understand, we're going to actually, uh, we're going to link this up with current day events. Uh, and we have a lot to study here tonight. Yep. So uh, he said, by, by your communication, it, the word trade is in there. Uh, it even, in, in fact, not only is the word trade in there in some of the Bibles, I, I, I read it all uh, we know that in addition to trade was commerce and merchandise and traffic. But what do you traffic when you're in heaven? Well, you're trafficking words, all right? And words have power, Kathy. Words have power. And words have the, uh, communication has the ability to charm its listener. And I mean charm, I don't mean charm in a positive way. I mean charm like you would charm a snake or you would charm a lion to settle down and not eat you while you're inside the lion cage and doing a show. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, the whole concept is to, to charm means to control, to get it under con something under control. And so he was using words in heaven, he was using communication in heaven. Again, all that teaching we took almost a half hour last week to talk about. Right. The next thing that we, find, we found out last week in verse 13, it says, you were in Eden, the garden of God. And we found out last week that there was a difference between the garden of Eden and the garden of God. Right. The garden of Eden was a shadow and a type of the garden of God in heaven. And it says, you were in Eden, the garden of God. And so a lot of people read that and they don't understand all the Hebrew that's going on in this particular verse, and it comes up many other times, it says over in verse 16, uh, halfway through, uh, from the mountain of God, I have destroyed you, O covering cherub. So this mountain of God is not on, it's not on earth, it's in heaven. The garden of God called Eden in heaven. So the garden of Eden that Adam and Eve lived in was a shadow and a type of what's already existing in heaven. The uh, tabernacle that was built we find out it was a mere copy of what's already in heaven. In fact, scripture uses the term mere copy. 
So all these things that we're seeing happen in the earth are mere copies of what's actually going on already in heaven. And yet, again, the prophetic nature of shadows and types, the prophetic nature mm-hmm. of previous events, uh, Uh, giving us an illustration of what's going to happen in the future uh, is extremely important at this stage. Okay. Right. So, and then we find out down again in verse 18 of uh, Ezekiel 28, by the multitude of your iniquities. And we found out last night that is Ivan or evil in Hebrew. And, and by the unrighteousness of your trade or the unrighteousness of your communication. Mm Mm-hmm. All right, and we, again, we found out what those Hebrew words were. Uh, you have profaned your sanctuaries. What sanctuary did he profane? He profaned his own sanctuaries in heaven. And so the devil, his original name was praise all over the Old Testament, and even in the book of Revelation, we see hallelujah. So half of hallelujah was actually Satan's original name. Right. God made him halal to praise. And he was, he was next to God, and his responsibility was to praise God. And, and he was to lead others in the praise of God. So praising God wasn't, wasn't just to give honor to God, right. but it was to be an example of others for right. others to go and lead them to praise and to worship all right so then we find the word nakash and we find that nakash the root word nakash means to whisper a spell to prognosticate and prognosticate i had to look up but let me tell you all the different words in the hebrew for nakash all right Number, the prime root is nakash, which means properly to hiss, to whisper a magic spell. The term whisper there is important, right? Generally to prognosticate, all right? So to prognosticate <laughs> uh, means to uh, plant a thought or plant um, an image in the mind of someone is planting an image in Eve's mind in the garden and said, you surely will not die for God. God uh, knows that the day that you eat of it, you'll know good and evil. And and he's trying to get her to. So he's planting a thought. He's charming her mind to be turned against her. So one of the primary duties of our of Satan as he is currently is to charm your mind to twist information Mm -hmm. Right. And to get control of your mind, and we're going to see this in other scriptures that have nothing to do directly with this. Then the another word, uh, and and you know how to read Hebrew, you can see all these words in the Hebrew are spelt identical. And the the sound sounds very similar. The next one is uh, Strong's number 5173, and it, it is nakash, and it means an incantation or an augury, and it means an enchantment. All right, and then so what do we find out from this? We find out that his name means uh, as a serpent. So he's being called a serpent the, for the first time in Genesis. And we find out that he is to whisper a magic spell. He is to prognosticate and prognosticate. I had to go and look up, right? Because it's just, there's just all kinds of things going on and prognosticate, which comes from the Greek, it means foretelling, right? So it's where you get the term prognosis from. But it was, this, this, this one etymology uh, said it comes from the Greek, but it originally came from the Latin into the Greek. So it didn't go from Greek to Latin, it went from Latin to Greek. First appeared in English in the 15th century. Since that time, prognosticate has been connected with things that give omens or warnings of events to come and with people who can prophesy or predict future by such signs. So what does Satan do? I've taught this many times. What is a nightmare of, of a future event? It's merely a false prophecy Put into right. your mind about someone dying, about someone getting hurt, about you getting hurt, right. about a future event that hasn't come to pass. But it's a false prophecy. It's not true. 
He's a whisperer. So he whispers in the people's heads and the people's ears. Right, right. All right. So Shakespeare used the, uh, the prophecy sense of prognosticate in the sonnet that begins, not far from the stars do I my judgment pluck from thy eyes, my knowledge I derive, and constant stars and such I, I weave in art. And I'm just reading this. And, with, and to thee I prognosticate. All right, so that's in Shakespeare. So he, he's using it in the suggestion that when you tell a word to someone, you can prophesy the future of that person. Satan is a liar mm -hmm. and the father of lies. So what is he going to do? Jesus said he comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. He That's does right. that by prognosticating images into your mind of something that's not, not true, not right, or something that's going to take you down. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, then, we had to look up uh, the word that, that was here to whisper, and it's lakash, and it means to mumble as a charm, as a whisperer. So even the term whisper in the Old Testament is nearly identical to this term. And look at this now. This is Lakash, and Kathy, uh, your, our audience can't see this, but Lakash is spelled almost, look at that, we got, I, uh, look at this. We've got these two letters here ending with a shin, just like Nakash. Right. So Nakash and Lakash are spelled nearly identical. They sound different, and they're, they have completely different Old Testament numbers, but Lakash means to whisper by implication to mumble a spell as a, ma as a magician, a charm, a whisperer. Then the other root word to this is, by implication, a private prayer in a bad sense, an incantation, an amulet. It means charmed, erring, enchantment, orator, and prayer. But it doesn't mean good prayer. It means bad prayer. Right. Okay? And so then I take it one step further. Then I find out there's another word in Hebrew, all related to serpent, nakash. And this one is kashav, kashav which again has these two letters here. Mm -hmm. right, I'm not going to explain it every single time, but, but you can read it. And it means to uh, in, uh, impenetrate, literally to weave, to fabricate. Oh, that's good. Hmm? To plot or contrive, usually in a malicious sense, hence from the mental effort to think in regard to value, to compute to fabricate, to plot, or contrive in a, in a negative sense. So all these words for serpent that's being used for Satan are, have everything to do with magic, have everything to do with fabrications, have everything to do with false information. Right, right. So God gave him that name. He said, you're a fabricator. You are someone that's whispering. And the first time, not the first time, but one of the times that we find out about the use of this is in the Psalms. And I want to go over there. I'm going to turn you there real quick. Uh, Kathy, go with me to Psalm 41. Psalm 41 and verse 7. Psalm 41 and verse 7. All who hate me whisper together against me. Against me they devise my hurt, saying... A wicked thing is poured out upon him that when he lies down, he will not rise up again. How about, has any one of you been ever attacked by someone with words? Yep, we all Hello, have. We all have, right? And some mm -hmm. of those attacks can be pretty bad. Yep. You I think sure about can. this. I know for a fact that there was a study done when you and I were in high school. And I read the study over and over again, and I know more recent studies have been done. But they did a study uh, for... Teachers, they were studying teachers and teachers that were getting kids from a previous grade. The, the, so you taking the fifth grade and they were moving into the sixth grade and the teachers were falsely told who the outstanding students were in the fifth grade. Oh, yeah, I remember. And yeah, the that. teachers believed the report. So mm -hmm. guess who they treated better? Guess who they coached better? The students that they were told were the excellent A students from the fifth grade. And these are sixth grade teachers. So what's happening, it, and the study went on, they take the worst students in the class from the fifth grade and tell the teacher, and they outperformed everyone because the teacher gave them attention. 
And then the students that were not the worst, but were the best, were just given ordinary view, reviews to the teacher. And so, but the, the teacher got the low performers from the previous grade to be the highest performers because the thought was placed in their mind. Right. There, was another, there was another study that we've seen even more recently, although when I say recently, like 20 years ago, that if you tell people throughout the day, and I learned this in my sales classes, if you tell people throughout the day that they look sick, that they don't look like they're feeling good, by noontime, they won't be feeling good. Just tell them that they don't look like they're feeling good. And they'll start to go, you know what, I was kind of feeling something. And they start you know, touching their body and they start talking about all of it. And what they're doing is that you're actually making someone a hypochondriac with your words. You can do that. It's been going on. And we're gonna, we're gonna get even further into this as we get into the study here tonight. Now, um, so that's the first part. Then there's the, uh, then I had to look up all the different words that were related to, uh, to prognosticate, and we got prognostic, uh, we got, and then even, uh, so it means indicating something uh, in the future by signs or symptoms. Uh -huh. So if someone is gonna, someone's looking at you and goes, okay, you've got uh, a problem with your part of the body, you're gonna have, uh, or I'm seeing that you have symptoms, this is gonna get out of hand, we need to operate, we need to put you on medication, we need to do whatever. Right. right. So part of that word is to give a foreshadowing, if we don't deal with this now, this is gonna become worse later on. Right. Okay, so it, that's used in the medical field and we're, we- All the time. All the time. Right now, Satan and to prognosticate means to foreshadow, to indicate a future event by present signs, like a clear sky at sun, sunset prognosticates a fair day. Jesus said, red sky in the morning, uh, sailor take warning, red sky at night, sailor delight. Right. That's a prognostication that Jesus gave as an example of foretelling the end of the age. That to know. He said, listen, if you're seeing all these signs, know that you're in the end of the age. He's giving a prognostication. Okay. All right. The reason why we're focusing on that is that's what Satan does. Satan gives prognostications. He prognosticates to your mind. He speaks to your mind and tells you everything's going to fall apart. Everything's going down the tubes. The country's going down the tubes. If you want to listen to all that, that information being fed into your brain, is going to destroy you because it's designed to destroy you. Mm -hmm. It's designed to give you false prophecy yep. or fear. Exactly. And that's false evidence appearing real. Yes. Right? So uh, understand that he likes to do that, all right? So where is some prognostications in the, in the New Testament? We see one in Matthew uh, 4.1, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. What was the, te the devil tempting him with? And John 8, 44, Jesus said this, you are of your father, the devil, and you want to do the desires of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. All right. When was he a murderer from the beginning? From the beginning of the cosmos, but not from his beginning. His beginning was to be praise. So he, God named right. him praise because he was the praise angel. He was, right? yes. Uh, in Acts 13, it says this, but uh, the magician uh, was opposing him, seeking to turn the proconsul away from the faith. But Saul, who was also known as Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, fixed his gaze on him and said, you who are full of all deceit and fraud, you son of the devil. And what was he doing? He wasn't murdering anyone. He was seeking to turn the proconsul away from being a believer, which the apostle Paul had just made him a believer. Mm -hmm. So, so this uh, Elmias the magician, right? That's in Acts chapter 13, all right? Um, in 1 John 3, 8, it says this, one who practices sin is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. The Son of God has appeared for this purpose to destroy the works of the devil. What does Jesus bring to the table? Truth, the reality of truth. Uh, so, and then it says many, in, in 2 John 7, it says this, many deceivers have gone out into the world, those who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. This is the deceiver and the antichrist. And now watch this. Uh, Revelation 12, 9, and the great dragon was thrown down, the serpent of old, who's called the devil and Satan, who deceives the 
whole world. He was thrown down to the earth. So Satan deceives the whole world, and many people are willing to be deceived. One of the greatest things I think that a person can learn, Kathy, is to make sure that they are not listening to the wrong information. So, did mankind make the devil? No. Was his name Lucifer? The answer is no. He was a criminal in the garden. He wasn't even sent to the garden uh, to be an asset. He was already a criminal when heaven and earth was made. Um, we see that uh, Halal turned to Satan, and we did not cause that to happen. He caused that to happen in the garden of God. Not in the garden of Eden, but the garden of God called Eden in heaven. And again, I gave a lengthy discussion of where that came from. The other thing that was said too is that the, uh, that the person said that the date reference Bible is the one that made popular that a third of the angels were swept out of the sky. Dake is from this this last century. I think he published the Dake Bible in 1925, 1935, 45, right in that area, whenever that was published. But it was in the 1900s. The previous writers that I brought out their book and I printed out, I printed out this uh, called Keel and Deeks, they were born in the early 1800s and they talked about it. And then and then all the other writers from the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd century talking about the book of Revelation. They talked about it. And we brought out that book here last week and read briefly from it. So commentators have been saying that Satan took a third of the angels with him. His tail swept them because he communicated. He charmed their ears with false information about God. And then said, I want you to war with me. And a war broke out in heaven. Anyway, um, so uh, let's let's go over to look at some scriptures uh, that are really important for us. Um, Proverbs eight eighteen eight. It says this. The words of a whisper are as dainty morsels. They go down to the innermost parts of the belly. So when someone tells you something about somebody. What ends up happening is that those words go in your mind, and it's hard to get those words back out of your That's brain right. again, even if you know they're a lie. Right. Like That's you, right. like you say, uh, uh, watch that person. They they put on their glasses upside down, and so you're waiting for them to put on their glasses upside down because they got glasses that are kind of designed like, and you'd be waiting for that, and you'd be thinking about it all the time, or wait. Just wait for it. Watch, watch <laughs> them do whatever you just said yes. about another person. So you can whisper to right. someone and you can plant a seed. You can prognosticate. You can predict the future, supposedly. What if someone's doing that about you and speaking evil about you? And they come and tell you, well, you're never going to amount to anything. That is a word going down into your innermost belly. And how many of us have had negative self images that some of you still yeah. haven't gotten over to people, this day. People telling you you're not worthy. Right. Yep. So having a negative self image is a terrible thing. And many times it's built by someone else in your, from your childhood or from uh, as an adult. Right. And, having a, and you can build a negative self image very quickly uh, if you get around the wrong information or the wrong, wrong people. Amen. I know people that keep on going back to the same types of people uh, and they, they wonder why their self image isn't improving. The reason why the self image is not improving is because you're hanging around the wrong people, you're listening to the wrong things. Right. You are actually allowing your future to be prophesied because your brain is not able to withstand negative prophecies concerning you. And so you need to get away from those types of places. And here's the other thing. Someone who has a negative self-image can't take correction. And so when the right correction comes, they are so beat up and beat down that when someone like me or our leader in, in ministry gives someone else a good word, of development that will develop them, they can't receive it because they can't get past their negative self-image. And the way that you get rid of that negative self-image is not reading necessarily a self-help book, it's getting away from the environments that are consistently trying to destroy you. Right. So if I correct someone, the Bible says that the word will correct people, and I, okay. I should be in, ready to correct in season and out of season. Right. right? 
But there are a lot of people that are just not correctable because their self-image is so poor. And the self-image is poor because they've been hanging around the wrong people or maybe they grew up around the wrong people and they've never gotten that. They've never let the word of God cleanse their hearts of that negative self-image. That's right. Now, it says over in verse 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat of its fruit. Oh, so it's if true. words have power, they have power of death and they have power of life. Again, verse 21, the death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat of its fruit. It's your responsibility to make sure your words concerning yourself and your growth in Christ and your, you know, your ability to uh, be a good mother, be a good father, be a good wife or a good husband, be a good employee, be a good servant of God is you can't walk around putting yourself down all the time. And I know a lot of people do that. How many people look in the mirror when they get up in the morning, the first words out of their mouth is, well, I'm always going to be fat. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And what you are doing is prognosticating to yourself. You're prophesying to yourself. And the human mind will believe all that. Now, let's, let's go into some of these things that we read, and we'll come back to some scriptures. We went and, I went and looked up the, the science and psychology of, of the power of suggestion. Right. We have four reports here that were available online, this non-Christian things. And Kathy, just talk to me about what you read, because I had you read this too. Well, um, suggestion, whether you are suggesting something to someone or you are suggesting something to yourself, is extremely powerful. And um, they just have uh, so many you know, well, studies, I, I suppose you could say, that talks about how, just how persuasive and how, what a big deal it is. And it, and it is, because here we are, and the Bible says, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. So, if you are, are, if you are going to speak negative, you are going to walk down the path of death. I mean, there's just no, there's, there, there's no upside to that, okay? And if you walk down uh, the power of uh, talking about life and talking positive, then th that's total upside and you're going to be blessed. I mean, it's just, God has put it, it's either one or the other. It's, it's not a two-way road. If you take this left or you take the right, I mean. Right. But anyway. Um, so it, the power of suggestion. So if I suggest to you or I suggest to someone, Hey, you're not looking good at 8 a.m. in the morning. Then I hit them at 8.30. Then I hit them again at 9 o'clock. By noontime, that power of suggestion can mm -hmm. actually make them feel sick. Right. How, do we, how do we relate this to, to modern day? By the way, we've had, we, we did so, I did so much research on this. You were busy reading a lot of this research before, earlier today. Uh, how about the power of suggestion of a placebo? Uh, we just saw a pro you and I just saw a program that we've seen before about placebos being handed out in a hospital and the placebo worked. Right. It actually lowered the pain threshold for people that were taking because they right. were told they were taking pain pills. Right. And you could say the same thing I think about vitamins because there are, as we know, there are all kinds of ranges of vitamins out there. Uh, from where people will say this vitamin here is is so well made, it's 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 a hundred dollars. This vitamin here is is fifty. This vitamin here is twenty five. This vitamin over here is five. And whatever it is that that individual takes for a vitamin, they're taking it because they want to see a change in their body. They want to see something change in their body. So it 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 doesn't really to me. Oof. All right, so the vitamin is going to say, okay, I'm going to take a vitamin to help my heart, to lower my blood pressure. There's different vitamins you take. Then there's a vitamin for um, uh, your joints, make your joints better. So people are going to take these vitamins and they are expecting... They're expecting a change in their physical body. They're expecting a so change they in their body, so it's so prognosticating. It, it, it's they, a, so the label on the vitamin... Mm -hmm on the vitamin bottle, right. prognosticates yeah. into the mind right. of what they should expect happen right. to them. So you're going to take this vitamin and you're going to expect that your joints are going to be better off. Now watch this. Now watch this. 
So someone that's studying for an exam and they're in college. Okay. Okay. And they're studying for an exam, but they don't want the exam to be on Friday the 13th mm -hmm. because they think they're going to perform badly because it's a day. So we've got Friday mm -hmm. and we got Friday and it's the 13th of the month. So they tell the teacher, I can't take a test on that day. The teacher says, this is the only day you can take it. <laughs> they normally would have gotten an A if they had waited till the following week mm -hmm. or took it on that Thursday. But because they're taking it on that day and the warfare that somehow Friday and 13 are evil, because mm -hmm. they hear it all the time, right, right. they perform poorly and they don't get an A, they don't get a B, they, they barely get a C. Mm -hmm. And so the whole concept of the planting of images in a person's mind is absolutely critical and Satan knows that. And he's planting, he's prognosticating images into your mind all the time that uh, something's going to happen bad to you. This is why many times you just can't talk. You shouldn't be talking about anything at all. Um, how about uh, not only placebos, so how about uh, someone that feels like they uh, they have like a lucky rubber band or a rabbit's foot or something like that. And if they have that or a St. Christopher's medal, right? Mm -hmm. As you know, I remember my parents gave me a couple of St. Christopher's medal. I grew up Catholic and said, well, you should carry this on you all the time. And I forgot what it was supposed to do, but whatever. Mm -hmm. So but people that are deeply Catholic and really believe in that, they, they, can't, they can't lose their St. Christopher's medal or whatever other medal that they get that right. is working in their brain as a charm. Right. It's like saying, if I, I always wear this, these shoes when I go on an interview for a job because these shoes, I, every time I wear them, I get hired. Mm -hmm. And so they put on the shoes because they have already prophesied in their brain and even spoken it out loud yes. that these shoes somehow give them additional uh, additional favor. edge favor mm -hmm. right in order so this distorts our these things distort our memory so you can have a distortion of memory for good if i tell you all the time and i do if i tell you all the time that your your mind is increasing you're you're getting smarter then your mind is going to increase and you're going to get smarter. The Bible tells us that over, I think it's in the book of Isaiah, that uh, when we get old, if we read the scripture repeatedly, that, that in our old age, we shall be full of sap and very green to declare that Yahweh is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. So I'm reading that scripture over and over and over again. I'm getting healthier as I'm getting older. I'm getting smarter as, as I'm getting older. I'm full of sap and very green and there's no unrighteousness Amen. in me. Amen. So I... So I'm doing those things. But let's, let's look at something that happened in the book of Galatians. Let's go over to Galatians chapter 3, verse 1. Start in verse 1. You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you before whose eyes Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified? In other words, who has charmed you away from the truth? That's right. Who put thoughts in your head to take you away? Now keep reading. Understanding that Satan is behind all these things. Legalism, which is what he's referring to here. Right. Keep going. This is the only thing I want to find out from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by hearing with faith? Are you so foolish, having begun by the Spirit, are you now being perfected by the flesh? Did you suffer so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? So then, does he who provides you with the Spirit and works miracles among you do it by the works of the law or by hearing with faith? In other words, um, they were turning back to a sense of the law, and they shouldn't have been doing that. Right. And so, uh, so what was happening to them, they were losing their original faith, and someone right. was putting thoughts into their head that was changing the memory of how they got. Right. To where they needed to yep, be. More legalism. Um, more legalism. Uh, let's go over to. Um, let's go over to Isaiah chapter twenty-nine, or back up to the Old Testament to Isaiah chapter twenty-nine. Uh, read for me, verse four. Then you will be brought low. From the earth you will speak, and from the dust where you are prostrate, your words will come. Your voice will also be like that of a spirit from the ground, and your speech will whisper from the dust. All right, so your words will come. And the word will there is put in at the privilege of the translators, but it says that your words basically are, what you're saying now, are prophesying what's about to happen to you. 
Yes. And so that's what's being said there. And your voice will also be like that from a spirit from the ground and your speech will whisper right. or your speech uh, is that that same term that uh, Lakash, it, your speech right. will lie to you. Yes. So Lakash, Nakash, Nakash is serpent. Lakash is whisper. Yes. And so th this this or and, and it means to charm yourself. So your own words can lie to you. Well, how does that how does that deal with anything that we've been dealing with right now? Um, when I heard a preacher say this decades ago, he said that uh, when one of his children got sick, he refused to even look at his child. Right. He prayed for him to be healed, but he refused to look at him until the wife said, "He's healthy. He's whole." And so I started practicing that to a certain extent with our children. Our children were young, and our children would just have you know just. Things would happen. Kids are kids. But with eight kids, it just seems like, my goodness, I had to be careful with my words. You do. Yes. And, and I couldn't say, our kids are sick all the time. I couldn't right. say something like right. that because those words would prognosticate it would. my future. I would be right. prophesying negatively my future. Right? right. Death right. and life are in the power of the tongue, and those that love right. it shall eat of its fruit. So if you're not feeling well, you don't go around blabbing all your symptoms you don't do that. If, not if you want to be healed. Right. You want to be better. Which, what, you know, and, and people don't understand this. A majority of the people don't understand this. But if you're not feeling well and someone goes and they look at you and obviously something isn't right, you know, and they say, well, are you feeling okay? And my answer is, yes, I'm fine. I'm fine. And I was once at the doctor's office and I was, uh, I was pregnant. It was a, it was a checkup. And um, I was tired. It was the end of the day. I had several kids. And uh, he goes, how you doing? I go, I'm doing great. He goes, come on now. He said, you would say that no matter how you felt, wouldn't you? And I go, absolutely. <laughs> because I don't want to talk about any kind of symptoms. I can't. I was actually practicing something that I learned just recently that I, I hadn't realized I was practicing it. So Wednesday, uh, we have Bible study at 7 p.m. We have worship practice at 5.30, and I'm, and I'm in worship practice, and then I work the day before that, right? So it's, it seems to be a long day. And so I started saying, oh man, this is a long day. I'm tired, and I got tired. And I finally, something snapped upstairs like, hello, <laughs> you're cursing yourself, mm -hmm. you know? And so I stopped saying that and I, and I have more energy, but when you say things like that, yeah, it's just a long day and I'm, you know, eight o'clock is when we're done and oh my gosh, it's just, I'm tired, it's a long day. Whatever you say is, is what you're gonna get. Yeah, so, right, you're, so, you're prognosticating. I did. Your, I, own, yeah, your own livelihood, yeah, that's right? That's right. You, you they, yeah, so. Um, I, uh, know that there is a lot there are a lot of people out there that put online you couldn't do this 25 years ago but now people talk about how they're feeling for the day <laughs> you know how you feeling i don't know and, and they're putting this stuff out on the internet on facebook mm -hmm. and twitter and other things and and i look at that and i go why are christians good christian people talking about their health online for other the only thing that's going to happen is either people are going to feel sorry for you and, you and 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 feeling sorry for you will keep you where you're at or people will actually add to your own to your own prognosis and go well you know you could have and what right. are people saying now so right i i walked into a store yeah about a month ago and i just like that, just a little. And the person behind me said, said, are you okay, are you sick? Why? Because everyone in the media is telling everyone that if you get around anyone with sniffles, they must have COVID, and the next thing you know, you're gonna die. Mm -hmm. So what happens to people now if they genuinely get COVID? Genuinely, I mean, really come up with the test and they're, they're over 60. What, what they've been feeding on, if they're not like you and I, if they're making sure they're not feeding on all this negative stuff, what they're going to expect their body to do is to shut down and, and enter, enter an early death. 
because that's what they've been hearing. Their mind is going to go to work and their body is going to follow. Right. All right. But on the other hand, people like you and me, we, you know, bring it on. We, we don't care. We're not, we're not going anywhere. We're not going to die. And, you know, and, and we're not going to get sick. But see, it has to be the words of our lips first in order to have that, that, to, that prognostication come out well. Yes. We have to, and then you can't even talk under your breath. That means you can't whisper to no. yourself. No, you can't. No. And, in, you know, this is supposed to be a, just a, a study of, of Satan, but I, I have bumped into so many, so many people in the past month that normally, under normal conditions, they would be fine. Mm -hmm. But the media has got their brains bent around, and this is the Satan behind it. It is. Satan is completely behind all this stuff. People are running around in fear, and yet... Yeah. And yet what, what the media should be doing or could be doing, and instead they've chosen the route of, of um, speaking death. That's what they've chosen. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it bleeds, it leads. Mm -hmm. But what I have been battling with, and, and when people are talking to me about COVID and that, I tell people, I said, but I realize COVID uh, can, can affect some people very strongly, but the recovery rate is 99.6%. That is the recovery rate. Why don't we focus on the recovery rate? Why don't we fo focus on the 99.6%? Right. And this is, and, th and this is a, a, a yes, it's, it, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a cold, a flu, it's a virus, but we, we, we do not live in a sterile environment. Nobody does. And so um, I, I know that most Christians don't get the teaching of uh, watching what you say and speaking those things that are that not, are, uh, that are not as right, though they were. Right. 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 That's what you have to do. You mm -hmm. have to speak those things that are not as though they were. Right. And that is faith. And right. so a lot of people that are con con considered to be Christians don't follow that rule of thumb. They don't have. Not at all. You know, I, I bumped into many Christians over the years, Kathy, that have good Christian speak, but they have. They've came. They've come from backgrounds with 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 poor teaching in that regard, or no teaching, or no teaching. And, but, exactly. But you know, they know their Bible. Uh, mm -hmm. They they're good people. Uh, they're not. They're definitely going to make it to heaven. But they have no idea what they're doing to themselves. Um, let's uh, let's look at a couple scriptures in, in the New Testament here, and uh, we'll close it. Uh, let's go over to uh, Mark. Uh, chapter 4, Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4 okay. and verse 24. And he was saying to them, take care what you listen to. By your standard of measure, it will be measured to you and more will be given you besides. Okay, do you realize that I have had to turn off the news. I haven't had, uh, I yes. think I w I've, I've seen 30 minutes of news in four months, right, and that's two minutes here, five minutes mm -hmm. there, and and I and I'm sorry that I watch it every single time I turn it on, and and these are my favorite stations like Fox News, right. Now I know that there's other podcasts out there, and I don't have time for all that. I mean, I'm not going to be spending a lot of time watching the news anyway, but uh, and, and that are positive. But the reality is, I don't want to see this stuff. I don't want to hear it. Be it says Jesus, Jesus himself said. Take care what you listen to. Yes. Take care what goes in your ears because that will prognosticate your future. Yes. Take care what you listen to from friends. Don't go to people for advice on, on COVID, but don't go to other people for advice on your marriage when they don't have a good one. Don't go to them for advice on a, finding a husband if they've been divorced three times. They don't even know how to lose them, not find them. Don't go to people that are not winning in a particular area. You don't go to a non-Christian for Christian advice. No, no. You don't go to another Christian that's always negative about what's going to happen to the world in the next six months. Right. You don't go to a doomsday prepper uh, for ad advice on how to have a happy life because those guys are miserable. They're buying cans of food and hoping that they're dragging them out to the woods at night so their neighbors don't see. So... Um, Everything that is your brain is feeding on right now is going to determine how happy you are tomorrow morning. That's right. 
And, you know, and I, I wish, you know, you can't shake people to understand this. The only thing that can change people, if, if someone would just read this scripture a hundred times between now and tomorrow noon, their attitude would change. Absolutely. But it's not just one scripture. And then he says, whoever has to more shall be given. So in other words, the more you have of negative going into your brain, the more you're going to believe it. In fact, you will think I'm the one who's insane and you're the one who's right. sane. Right. And yet I'm the one reading scripture and I can tell you for a fact, my wife and I are the ones that are following scripture in regard to what we hear, to what we let into our eye gate, into our ear gate, and to what we speak out of our mouth. That's right. So if I have a negative thing that I want to think about, I'll tell Kathy, ask me, why aren't you talking? Because the only thing that will come out of my mouth right now will be a prognostication yes. against myself. Now, I never said that before right. today, but because uh, <laughs> I just looked up the word today. But that's the way it works. It, it does. Okay, now let's go over to um, let's go over to Matthew chapter twelve. Matthew twelve, verse thirty-seven. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. All right, so absolutely. Yeah, so your words are going to condemn you, but your mm -hmm. words aren't just condemning you in heaven. Your words are condemning your life here right on the earth. Right now. Back up to one last scripture. Let's look at. Um, well, uh, go over to um, Mark eleven. Mark eleven. Mark eleven twenty three. Truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, "Be taken up and cast into the sea," and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says is going to happen. It will be granted him. Amen. What else? There's a, there, I mean, all I have for my defense, Kathy, to our, our audience and our public, and particularly those right now that are saying that COVID's going to kill off the world, is the scriptures. I've got, I've got science, but you won't listen to the science. Many of you are not listening to even the science. And the science isn't what you're getting on CNN, NBC, CBS, not from those stations. Right. You're not getting any truth or any science. Nope. And all yeah. you have to do is go online like I do to see the real science. Amen. And the real science is out there. But you've got to take, you got to strip away all the headers. You've got to strip away all the junk and just look at the facts. Amen. But people think you and I are oddballs. And you know what? Twelve spies came back out of the land of Canaan. Yes. And reported to uh, the people. And only two spies had a, gave a good report, Joshua and Caleb. You know what happened to the other 10 spies? They died. They did. God took them out because they were given a, they were given a negative yep. he waited prognostication. For them to die, and then he moved everybody into the promised land. Right. It's powerful if we control our tongue, but we also have to control what's going in to our brain and going into the environments around us. Amen. Let's all stand to our feet and we're going to close it in prayer. Father, we give you glory and honor and praise. Father God, we ask that you change the hearts of all those that are here and all those yes, that are Lord. listening and watching us in the future. And Father, I thank you for that right now and that the enemy is not able to steal any part of this message Amen. from them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So Kathy, let's look in the camera and say, this is Pastor Dave and Kathy saying, Press into God. And he'll press into you. And we'll see you again here this Sunday at, at the, the mountain. mountain.